I just got my hands on the brand new Lulzbot Taz Psychic 747. Today, I'm gonna give you a first look and show you how easy it is to set it up straight out of the box. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. The Lulzbot Taz Sidekick 747 is the newest in the long line of Lulzbot 3D printers. This printer debuted at Murph 2021, and I was super pumped to see it. The team was awesome to work with. It was really cool to talk to them about all the new specs and features on these printers, and I knew I had to get my hands on one. The really cool thing is that a few people at Murph actually got to buy the ones they had there and take them home early ahead of production, and I wish I could have been one of those people. Greg, I'll link his channel in the description below, was lucky enough to do that and put out some really great content ahead of everybody getting theirs. So check that out. So Taz Sidekick 740 is kind of a long name so from now on in this video I'm gonna call it the 747 this thing has a ton of features built in including being over 50% 3d printed and we're about to see that it might be the most 3d printed production printer out there I'm not sure so let's get to the unboxing so I got the box I got my trusty knife let's get this thing cut open well the top, the top one sucked apparently let's try that again Bam. So I cut open the top of the box as you can see. This is what it looks like when you open it up. There's a remove all shipping fasteners before printing warning and there's little orange pieces it looks like. Also this giant piece of instructions which is pretty awesome. I'll get to that in a minute but for now let's pull this bad boy out. So also in the box, attention, save all packaging. It is required if warranty shipping is needed. So save this box. So this is it. It comes all in foam like this. Looks like it's packaged very nice. It's basically like a cube. On the back side is a box here full of goodies. It comes with a bag full of stuff. This pops open. It looks like we got instructions on how to unpack this. So we're gonna do that. So we popped it open, we stood it up, we pulled off the side panels like you just saw. Uh, make sure it's on a steady surface, it says. Check. So we gotta get all this packaging out. So in the back, there's this orange piece. I believe you have to take that out carefully. It is printed, but it's a nice lock piece there. So it looks like this is being held on by these 3D printed uh, bolts here. So we'll pop that off. There's one. These are really good prints too as far as uh, keeping this stuff steady. Here we go. When you get those done, this pops out. Then that pops out. So once you get that packaging out and you get those two bottom bolts, you pop this bad boy out like this. Bam, and there's your gantry. Some little 3D printed washers that are orange. I believe all the orange comes off, just like the box said. They're shipping, uh, they're shipping fasteners, and they just have these really cool 3D printed knobs and threads here. So you get that undone, oops, and that pops off like that. Check, I'm gonna set them over here. Then we just have to pop all of the orange pieces off. So here's one in the back that I just dropped. Um, it looks like here's another one here. Oop, there we go. So all of the orange has to come off at some point. So I'm, I'm assuming we might use the green again. There's my tool head there. There we go. It is, ooh, I'm super pumped for this. It is the Mosquito with the Bontech on it. Here's another orange belt holder here. We're gonna pop those, check. Here's another one on this side. We'll pop those, and that's what it looks like so far. Next, we wanna fold out the screen. So I'm gonna fold it out to about right there. Then I'll peel the plastic. And we're gonna fold out the power supply here. So there is a TPU printed clip here, a TPU printed clip at the bottom, and then that folds open. 
Then you take your TPU printed clips and you push them back down and that keeps the power supply from swinging back. Next, we need to put the Y axis on and I was looking all around for two more of these black 3D printed uh, bolts or thumb screws is really what they are. And I could not find them and I realized what they did on the underside here, right here, is where they actually stored those for shipping. So you unscrew them from here and you get the last two you need to secure this to the printer. So now we have two here, two there, and we're gonna secure our Y axis to the printer. So we'll spin this back around. So the power supply is the back of the printer here. We are going to set this right over the top like this. There are four 3D printed brackets, two in the front and two in the rear. You take your thumb screws and you screw them right on. Make sure they're good and tight. There are uh, threads pressed into the bottom 3D printed bracket, so that's cool. And now the Y axis is installed. Next, what you wanna do is find your big harness here and it's gonna connect to the back of the bed. And I found it's a little bit easier to pull a couple, pull them out just a little bit and make sure they're in there, right? The, the one that's tricky is the little one and it just pops right in. And then uh, clip the two bigger ones in like that and then push your TPU printed grommet right over them so they stay locked in there and secure. The next one we want to plug in is this one right here and this is for the motor. It's kind of hard to see but it's down underneath this back piece and it goes in like this. So once you get that pushed in, push the TPU boot over the top and it's kind of a tight fit so be careful there. We got our electronics plugged in down below. It's time to mount the tool head here. This is the tool head I opted for. It has uh, the Bontech extruder, the Mosquito hot end. It uses 1.75 filament, but they do offer a 2.85 tool head as well, which is really cool. How this is gonna go on is you're gonna take these two little thumb screws here and this long one. It's going to sit back on the plate they have right next to the BL touch. This is a real BL touch they're using. And then you're gonna take your thumb screws and it goes right down into the top um, and holds that bad boy on. So there's two that go in the top and then there's one that goes right in from the back. And you wanna make sure that they are all on. Just thumb tight as well. Remember these are 3D printed parts and you don't wanna over tighten them with a wrench or anything like that. Then your very long one, that'll go straight in from the back and that'll hold that plate against the back like this. We're gonna make sure that our cable is sitting in the channel here because it's always good to have it down in the channel. Once you get this mounted, plug in the power and it only goes one way, it snaps together. And it looks like there's a little loop under here that goes under this one of the thumb screws. So I'm actually gonna put it under there. Probably a little security loop in case something were to happen and it probably keeps it nicely and held down. So if I can get in here, I'm just gonna unscrew this quick and there's a little loop in the wiring harness uh, made out of TPU it looks like. And it looks like the screw goes right through, you know, the thumb screw goes through it and it secures that down. That way it does not move around on you and a little bit of security there. Yep, it goes just like that. So that loop is now over there and it just kind of holds that wiring harness out of the way. All right, the next thing we want to do is drop our spool holder. So we loosen up, but we don't take it out. We just drop it straight down like that and then tighten it back up. Now this does move about, uh, they say like five degrees-ish to accommodate different size spools if you need to. So there's that. So we need to install the th filament runout sensor behind this thumb screw. So take the thumb screw out, push it back in, and then turn it in. And be careful, there is a T-nut hiding in there that you need to use. There we go. So you can put it up wherever you need it and tighten it in like that. So there we go, filament runout sensor that I ordered is connected here. Uh, now, I believe that's it. All we have to do is warm this bad boy up. Then we're gonna pull this down and push it into our hot end here, into the extruder. 
and get it going. Before we connect the hot end, let's talk a little bit about what else comes in the box. So if we look right over here, we get a white box that looks like this. If we open it up, it comes with a really beefy set of uh, Allen wrenches, a bunch of different sizes there. Also, so nano gloop. Thank you so much, 3D Gloop. We're gonna pull that out. And there's a business card for them as well. Then they get a bag like this. And inside that bag, we have an SD card, brand new SD card here. We have a Lulzbot sticker. Gotta love the stickers. Power cord, of course. Um, you know what, a six foot USB cord. That's a pretty awesome get right there. It's a trip light actually, which is nice. Uh, you get two samples of the PLA, it looks like. One's a Polymaker Poly Light. One is a green, um, the 3D Fuel Green, just exactly what this printer is printed out of, I believe. There's a warranty form right inside there too. So that's everything that comes with this printer. And the next thing we're gonna do is grab this power cord right here, plug it in and get this thing rolling. We're gonna take a quick look at some of the stuff I ordered on mine because when you order one of these, you actually include everything you want or don't want when you put the order in. For the tool head I ordered, I got the Bond Tech with the Mosquito hot end. Uh, that tool head is gonna be awesome. I love this combination and comes with a nice beefy part cooling fan here and of course, the mosquito fan to cool down the heat break in there. I also ordered the filament runout sensor as we showed putting it on a little bit ago. So that's a pretty cool feature you can order as well. I also ordered the screen that comes with it. You can see it says Task Sidekick on there. When it boots, it actually shows the Lulzbot logo, but you do not have to order this. You can run this solely from the USB and that is okay. And a lot of people do that in their print farms with their other Lulzbots as well. It's kind of nice. It actually swivels back and forth and you can put it in pretty much any orientation you want. This right here is a printed dial for it. Uh, it'll go through the menus just like a regular screen would. Another option I ordered was the magnetic flex plate here. Uh, I love magnetic flex plates and this thing really holds down very well. If I flip this up, you're going to see that the bed has built in magnets here and it goes all the way across the bed. You can feel them a, just a little bit, but it looks like they inlaid them into the plate of the bed there. And then basically you just take your bed, you slide it against the back and you let it flap. I don't know if you heard that, but this thing really drops hard. Let's see. So that should be a pretty awesome surface. There's a couple different surfaces you can choose from. That's the one I went with. So I just went through some of the accessories or parts that I ordered for this thing. And that's one of the coolest things about this. You go onto the configurator, you add the stuff you want, you don't add the stuff you don't, and you get the printer as you wanted it. You don't have to add the screen for the extra money. You don't have to add the filament runout sensor. And there's a bunch of different tool heads you can choose from. One of the really cool things is with the tool heads, if you have any other Lulzbot Tazes out there, they all are interchangeable. So if you have old tool heads out there from the Lulzbot Taz, it should fit right on this and you don't have to buy any other ones. Another cool thing is you could swap out this 1.75 filament tool head for a 2.85 tool head, which is really awesome if you have extra 285 or you wanna run maybe a tool head with a thicker nozzle and some bigger filament, maybe have some laying around you wanna get rid of, anything like that. It's really cool that you can be diverse like that with this thing. Something I didn't already point out, this does have a built-in BL Touch right here in the back. It's already ready to go and we'll give it a test when we start firing up first prints. This does have a 24 volt power supply, which is pretty awesome. And it's also running Marlin firmware. As far as slicing goes, it uses a rebranded Kira. So uh, I'm gonna get that loaded on the computer and I believe there's a firmware update that when I get it loaded on the computer, will push to the printer as well. So we'll get it updated to the newest firmware right out of the box as soon as I load the rebranded Kira on my computer. This does come with a one year warranty right out of the box. And it also has this right on the bed. And what this says is we respect your freedom to modify your Lulzbot desktop 3D printer. However, any modifications or attempt repairs that cause damage are not covered under the warranty. So if you have issues, call them first. They're gonna help you. They're gonna walk through it with you before you try to repair something and break it. There are two different colors you can get when you order these. You can get the Lulzbot green or the stealth black, which are both pretty dang awesome. I wanted the green because I thought it would pop a little more for the stream, and I really like how it looks so far. So stay tuned. I'm gonna get this thing fired up. We're gonna get a bunch of test prints going and see how they look. I cannot wait to check this thing out. I will use the leveling feet under here to get it nice and level before I print. Uh, I think the parts look pretty good. 
Uh, overall, the machine is beefy, it's built good, and it's over 50% printed, as you can see from all of the green parts and uh, black parts here. There's TPU. There, this thing is just uh, going to be a lot of fun to print with, and I can't wait to get that going. So stay tuned. We're going to see what else comes off this 747. I cannot wait to get this thing printing. I should note that Lulzbot did send me this as a review unit. I'm going to use it for a few months and I'm going to package it back up and send it back to them. Unless I decide to buy it, they did give me an option to do that as well. But they did send it to me as a review unit, so I, no money exchanged hands. They're not asking me for anything. They don't want to see the videos ahead of time. They just sent this to me because they're awesome and they're going to let me test it out and get some videos out on it. I think the first actual print I'm going to do is the mini gym that you can get on Thangs and Thangs is a sponsor of this video. So thank you so much Thangs for sponsoring this video. If you want the mini gym as well, go down to the link in the description below and grab it. Uh, it is free, it's on Thangs and you can print as many mini gyms as you want. After the first print, when I do jump over to that mini gym that I grabbed on Thangs, I'm going to use this Coex 3D filament. Now Coex sponsors the channel with filament. They're awesome. They're made right here in Wisconsin. And this color I have not used yet. This is lilac purple. And I can't wait to see what a mini gym looks like in this purple. So stay tuned because this is going to be an awesome color, especially on the mini gym. Who knows? We might even jump into a torture toaster also found on Thangs. So thank you so much Coex for sponsoring the channel with filament. I really appreciate it and I can't wait to check out this lilac purple. I hope you guys learned something, enjoy the video, and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, I hope you liked the video today. If you did, shoot me that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button right here if you haven't already done that and the bell to get notified anytime we go live or put out another great video right here on the Edge of Tech.